Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today I have a question for you. When was the last time you ran AA skills on one of your ships? Specifically, secondary battleships is what we're looking at today. One of the main reasons that it can be a little frustrating to play this type of ship and this type of playstyle, pushing in, trying to make use of the brawling tools available to you, is when there's a carrier in your game and you push forward and of course, that makes you the prime target for the enemy carrier. What if we just ran some AA skills to try and compensate that? Let's see what happens, right? My testing over Christmas, where I didn't really take fire prevention on any of my battleships, made me realize there are times and situations where if I play around it, I can actually skip fire prevention, even on a secondary battleship and maybe put that into something else. I was trying heavy AP and furious, things like that. But what if we put our skills into AA upgrades and then we limited the amount that surface ships could fire at us. And then when we push up into those aggressive positions and the carrier does come after us, will we shoot down planes at all? I don't know. So I had to try it out. I got a few decent games. Of course, I died a lot, but I have a few decent games to show you guys. First one here in the Ohio. Not quite running full AA. We are missing out on that sixth upgrade slot. We, of course, will look at the builds later. But the main reason we're missing out on that sixth upgrade slot for our AA and secondaries is we're taking main gun accuracy. I don't think you want to skip that on the American battleships for this reason right here. Broadside Montana, that is a 50k salvo, or near enough. Uh, we don't want to miss out on those opportunities. So when you're playing in Ohio, Monty, uh, Vermont, things like that, don't take reload, don't take AA secondary upgrades, just take the accuracy. You're going to be thanking yourself when you land salvos like that. Doesn't happen all the time, but it is doable. Pushing with the Ohio here in the middle of the map, we do have to be very careful of the submarine, for example. But there's these little islands here towards where the B-cap is that we can sort of hide behind. And this is putting us in risky positions here for the enemy carrier to start coming after us. Now we will have a Montana and later a Conqueror backing us up as well. So it isn't just us. I don't think you want to be playing a ship even with AA skills <laughs> as much as they can seem to do here uh, all alone. You really do need to clump AA. That's really how it's going to work best. The Monty does get taken out and I didn't really feel like uh, needed to shoot at him again. So let's work on this Yamato now. Now when it comes to AA in this game, I really do hope they change it to make it a little more engaging, a little more gameplay oriented. As it stands right now, all it is is sectoring your AA to prioritize one side of your ship, and that's about it, especially if you don't have defensive fire. There's not a lot of gameplay here, it's just its own system running in the background. I really wish I could control my AA manually aiming the flak bursts, that kind of thing. That at least would be a cool addition. But we do get seven planes shot down there and quite a bit of AA damage ourselves. This AA build is going to do more damage to planes, at least if they're going to hit those flak bursts. Those are the high damaging things to planes. That's what's gonna knock them out of the sky most of the time. And I think it'd just be more fun. I don't think carriers would be nearly as annoying if there was actually some sort of gameplay going on. They of course have mentioned they do want to change how carriers and plane interactions work with surface ships. So I'm hopeful that we see a little more engaging uh, gameplay there rather than it just being its own system in the background where you don't really feel like you're fighting a PVP experience. Although it doesn't seem like that's the intention of the changes. So far, all we really know about is their attentions, at least while I'm recording this video where they want to change spotting mechanics and they want to reduce the amount that a carrier can focus on one target, which will sound very good. I would just like to see a little more gameplay added into it as well. But the carrier focusing one target and reducing that could also make us more powerful in a situation like this, where the last couple of strikes have been the carrier coming after us. Hopefully that means that every time each successive attack they make against us with new squads, potentially two, means our AA gets stronger and stronger. Here we can see we're taking that whole squad out before he even gets a drop on us. Although it seems like he recalled his planes more to deal with the friendly fighter our carrier dropped for us, which is nice. Keep in mind we also have Monty and Conqueror helping us out here. Conqueror's not really much for AA help, but uh, Montana certainly is. Monty plus Ohio, pretty decent AA there. 
I'm gonna trust that the gearing is gonna take out the Balao there and move our attention more towards the enemy midway. The other consequence or benefit of pushing up like this and taking a little more focus from the enemy carrier is that when the enemy CV gets spotted, we're actually more likely to just be in range and able to fire on him. Ohio with accuracy upgrades looking pretty juicy here. If we can land a nice shot in the middle there, we could do maybe even a dev strike. A lot of citadels. Uh, only two citadels this time, but still a ton of damage. And he's on very, very low HP. So we definitely want to finish him off before we start dealing with the rest of this enemy team. Pushing like this is a great way to win a lot of games too. It's one of the reasons that I miss or I'm a little frustrated when there is a carrier in the game and I feel like I can't push in as easily. At least when testing this and trying out these more AA focused builds, I found that if I was able to make a push like this happen, I was still able to impact the game a lot by getting those flanking shots, helping kill the enemy carrier like we just did there, but also just catching off enemy broadsides, that kind of thing. Where the Thunder Hindenburg here, they are more focused towards our sea cap, or at least they were, and we can get some decent broadside hits in. Unfortunately, the island does eat our shot there. Now, I'm going to make a bit of a mistake here. Um, Normally you want to be turning into torpedo bombers, angle into them. Uh, but here I'm actually going to, I think, eat every single torp and take massive hits from the Laria on our broadside as well. So maybe not the best idea here, but we do take out all those planes yet again. Feels very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I ate every single torp there. <laughs> so we're going to be left on some low HP here towards the end of this game. That's okay. We can still uh, do some decent work here with the Ohio. The ship is relatively tanky still. Larry, of course, with sap shells is a little annoying to deal with. If he gets good dispersion, that's going to be a lot of damage coming into us that we can't really even angle to. But considering how well we've been doing in the Ohio, we shouldn't really be complaining all that much, should we? Hopefully the changes come through that give Ohio a little more ASW range as well. These AA upgrades are also going to help out your uh, ASWs to deal with submarines. So if we can get Ohio up to a reasonable amount of range on those ASW planes, these uh, skills could help you out there as well to deal with submarines. As it stands now, we feel a bit like uh, a T-Rex, T -Rex, right? Where we have the tiny little arms when dealing with the submarine. Uh, and we're scary against everything else, but uh, against those subs, we're a little bit helpless. Uh, unless our team is going to help us out a lot with those submarines. Or they get really close to us and we don't get shotgun. Then we can use those ASWs a little bit. Very, very low HP now, managing to survive some salvos here, 200 HP left. Uh, those fast cooldown heals are very, very useful on a ship like the Ohio when we push in like this. Managing to get the Hindenburg here, nearly getting through on points alone. Can we survive? Getting very fortunate, Thunder is getting unlocked dispersion here. He should definitely be killing us, but uh, he's getting some aim bugs that allow us to live here. And uh, the fire is out and we've won the game. <laughs> <laughs> Ships like Ohio can do this a little bit better than a lot of other ones, not only because they have more AA than a lot of ships, uh, like a Yamato wouldn't want to necessarily run a build like this and pushes aggressively, Conqueror also. Uh, not many ships have the AA to really even make it worthwhile buffing, but here we got 30 planes, not bad, and 50k plane damage is pretty decent, as well as a pretty awesome game just in general. But we're not done. I'm sure while you were looking at Ohio, you were thinking, wow, this ship doesn't even have defensive fire. What if we ran a ship with defensive fire and ran that sixth upgrade slot? Mecklenburg can, of course, take advantage of the secondary upgrades, but also that sixth upgrade slot can massively increase your AA damage when you have defensive fire up. It's going to give you two more flak bursts in your AA clouds here while that defensive fire is going on. And you can see us just kind of mow through these planes all by ourselves. I guess there's a Jutland next to us, but I don't know if that necessarily counts. Uh, he probably also has his AA turned off if he's uh, smart to trying to stay undetected here. But defensive fire full AA Mecklenburg is pretty scary. Vermont as well has a defensive fire too, but again, that one, I think you still just want to keep aiming systems. You're not going to benefit from the secondaries on that ship at all. And given the 40 second reload, we still probably want to take aiming systems just to not give our ship a 40 second reload and 11% worse dispersion than we'd normally have. 
But with the Mecklenburg, where we already have pretty good dispersion, even though the guns are a little smaller caliber, uh, we can afford to take it. And the secondaries do all right as well on this ship. So that is going to allow our AA to do some pretty massive damage. At the beginning of this clip, we had like 3,000 plane damage, already up to 40k plane damage here with just a couple drops. That's the power of uh, a full build here on the Mecklenburg and getting lucky too. Uh, of course, we need the enemy carrier to run into those flak bursts. That's why when I say I'd like to see a little more gameplay here is the ability to aim those flak bursts would be kind of cool because that's where the majority of the damage is coming from. So we just need the guy to just run straight into them and not try and dodge them. That's where the massive chunks of damage are coming from. But we do manage to catch up to this Immelman, which is really nice. So we are going to try and take him out. Also note, our AA is still at 100% capacity there. I've got a mod that shows me the amount of secondaries and the amount of AA left on my ship here. So that's going to be the other issue with running a build like this. When you meet a Thunderer, for example, or a Conqueror, or things shooting large caliber HE at you, you're going to lose a ton of your secondary and AA mounts, even if you invest in survivability for them. It, they'll just rip them off the ship. Uh, some ships are better than that than others. Kremlin comes to mind as a particularly poor example where even if you fully build them, a single Conqueror salvo just knocks most of the AA off your ship. Uh, it's kind of sad. But uh, in this case, we didn't take too much HE damage and uh, we did manage to keep our AA and secondaries alive. And just look at these planes melt. <laughs> So we get ourselves an AA defense expert here, just real quick at the end of this match, as well as 90,000 plane damage. So it can work. Uh, it can do some work. Uh, of course, all of these skills and upgrades are useless the instant there's not a carrier in your game, and the instant the carrier just decides not to go for you. But uh, if they go for you, then it can help. You're still going to take some damage, of course. That's how it is designed, but AA builds might be worth looking into if you get focused a lot or you want to push in even in those carrier games and deal some damage back to that enemy carrier. Now keep in mind, looking at these builds, they are certainly not optimal, but I was messing around with different options and trying some things out here. So if you want to see what I was running, this is what I had uh, running both these AA upgrades here. This two-pointer, of course, also gives us 40% cooldown to ship consumables when they're on reload while our AA is active, which is pretty neat, as well as giving us better AA. Um, the third pointer here is going to help us out a bunch when it comes to our uh, AA explosions, right? Our flak here giving us plus one burst here as well. So a little bit of upgrades there, I don't know. Um, perhaps it's just I got lucky that the enemy carriers wanted to run into our AA, but it certainly did, felt like it did more damage than it usually does. Um, of course, we're running artillery plotting room two here. The sixth slot here is just, it's too good to have aiming on these American battleships. Um, but that was what the Ohio looked like a little bit. And uh, the Mecklenburg, we are actually going to swap over to this sixth upgrade slot because those two flak bursts are usable on this ship. That plus two is only available to you when your defensive fire is active. So on a ship without defensive fire, you just are never making use of that plus two uh, flak burst. You are still getting the 15% on continuous and shell explosions, but it really is those extra flak bursts that are going to help us out a lot with the, the defensive fire here. And that's where the majority of the AA damage comes from with those flak bursts. The build on this one looks a little bit different because we're not really guaranteed to get five heals on a Mecklenburg most of the time. So. Try and use concealment. I uh, can give up a little bit of secondary range for some of the other benefits here, but not optimal builds, certainly. They are kind of trying to be brawler builds, but also run AA uh, and still be tanky. It's hard to fit that all in. So you are definitely missing out on a lot. Keep that in mind with some of these builds, uh, but interesting to try, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm kind of hopeful that these, uh, carrier reworks and things will come through. I really, really am hopeful for those spotting changes to be impactful, as well as the change that allows us to be maybe not the focus of the carrier the whole time. Uh, I'd love to see that where, sure, the planes come over and drop us once, maybe twice, but uh, then they leave us alone for a good while. That would be very, very helpful. So I hope those come through. 
still just intentions at this point. It's very early on in the development. So if you're watching this in the future, I hope it's better. <laughs> but uh, for now, all I have is hope. So thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.